أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال ما خطكن إذ راوتن يوسف عن نفسه قلنا حاشا لله ما علمنا عليه من سوء قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حس حس الحق أنا راوته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين ذلك ليعلم أني لم أخنه بالغيب وأن الله لا يهدي كيد الخائنين صدق الله العلي العظيم رب شرح لصدري ويسر لأمري وحد رقدة من لساني يفقه قولي يا رب صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله من Respected listeners, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this very gathering accept our saying and our listening. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this circle of tafsir-e-Quran means of our forgiveness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us to connect ourselves with his book with his kalam quran hakim may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us a topic and ability to recite his book to the recitation of the quran and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala At this moment in time, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save all of us from every calamity, whether it is present or come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to do good and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of us away from My listeners, in my previous talk, in our previous sitting, we reached to this verse of Surah Yusuf in which it was mentioned that Yusuf while he was in the prison, he receives a message from the king for his release. After hearing the message from the ambassador, Yusuf alayhi salatu salam did not make any haste for his release. Rather, he asked, first of all, the investigation should be made in my case. Then I will be ready and then I will accept the release. So he said to the to the ambassador, go and ask the king to make the investigation through the women who cut their hands. So when the king received the message of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, that the investigation should be made so he called for the women and he asked them Allah is saying that he said Qala ma khatbukunna. Oh, women what is your case is rawatunna yusuf an nafsi when you seduced yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam now here when the king said Tell me, when you seduced Yusuf which means the king in the heart he knew that Yusuf was not at fault but the party who was at fault are the women. 
the, the party who is at the fault is the wife of Aziz Misr, the governor of the Misr. His wife, she is at fault. So when the king asked the woman, what do you say about Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, kulla hasha lillah? They all replied by saying, may Allah forgive, may God forbid, ma alimna, alayhi min su, we know of no evil in him. We have not seen anything wrong in Yusuf alayhi salatu salam. He has not done anything wrong. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he comes to honor someone, then people themselves come forward and speak in the favor of that person. As it happened in this case here, while the women were being questioned by the king and the investigation was taking place and the king was questioning the women about Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, they all admitted the innocence of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam and they all replied that we have not seen any evil in Yusuf alayhi salatu salam. He has not done anything wrong. In that very gathering, the wife of the governor was also there. And then he spoke and then she also admitted. And she said, Qala timra'atul aziz al-an has has al haq Now she, she said, now the, the truth has come into light. Everything has been exposed now. So she spoke and she said, Ana rabattuhu an nafsihi. Yusuf alayhi salatu salam has not done anything wrong. It was me who seduced him. Not Yusuf alayhi salatu salam. Yusuf alayhi salatu salam did not do anything wrong. He is not at fault. I am at fault. So did you see, listeners, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he comes to honor someone, then people speak they come forward and they speak in his favor as it happened in this case here. The woman who put the full blame on Yusuf salam, now a time has come that when she is speaking in the favor of Yusuf salam, and she is declaring Yusuf as innocent and she is declaring her self at fault that I am at fault and Yusuf salam, is not at fault. He has not done anything wrong. And she speaks out and she says, it's not Yusuf's fault, it is my fault. وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ He is of the truthful, you know, he is truthful. He has not done anything wrong. Then Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, when he asked for the investigation, what was the reason behind this? And why did he delay his release? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two things regarding Yusuf delaying his release. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنِّي لَمْ أَخُنْهُ بِالْغَيْبِ Yusuf alayhi salatu salam said, I am delaying my release. Why? لِيَعْلَمَ So that the governor may know that I did not betray him in his own, on his absence while he was absent while i was at home and he was not at home i did not do anything wrong while i was at his house and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lead the guile of betrayers to success so number one the reason yusuf alayhi salatu salam delayed his release was he wanted the Aziz Misr, the governor of the Misr, to come to know that Yusuf والسلام, is really innocent. He has not done anything wrong. Why? Yusuf والسلام, thought, if I am released from the, from, the, from the prison, and also Yusuf والسلام, sensed and he acknowledged, after my release, the king, I will be, I will be honored 
by the king and the king will honor me with something with a with, with a high post so yusuf alayhi salatu salam thought if i am released without any investigation and for a time being the people will stop speaking against me but this thought will still keep on going in people's mind this is the very young man this is the very young man who tried to seduce the wife of the aziz misr the wife of the governor and what will happen happened eventually this thing will even go to the king and maybe a time might come that the king might might be influenced with this thought so therefore yusuf alayhi salatu salam decided that without the invest investigation i will not leave the prison and i will not accept the 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 message of release and also yusuf alayhi salatu salam wanted the aziz misr to know that yusuf alayhi salatu salam has not done anything wrong and yusuf alayhi salatu salam also thought if i am released without investigation and i am honored by the king although the aziz misr will not able to say anything to me but he will keep a grudge and he will keep a a, a, a hate against me in his heart which yusuf alayhi salatu salam did not want so therefore yusuf alayhi salatu salam wanted himself to be cleared of so that the the thought and the doubt which is occurring and which is in the mind of aziz misr would go away and then he is satisfied that it is not yusuf who is at wrong it is my own wife who is at wrong so for this very reason yusuf alayhi salatu salam he delayed his release number 2 the reason yusuf alayhi salatu salam delayed his release was that yusuf alayhi salatu salam said wa anna allah la yahdi qayd al khainin what does it mean the yusuf alayhi salatu salam thought that if i am released from the prison without any investigation then the people will think it is it is possible to betray someone and then also be honored like it happened with this young man he betrayed his his master and also then he is honored by the king so he he wanted to he wanted yusuf alayhi alayhi salatu salam wanted to give a lesson to betrayers that look the betrayal of betrayers it it is exposed at the end and they have to face the disgrace so yusuf alayhi salatu salam wanted to give a lesson to such people you know whose habit is to betray and deceive and whose habit is you know to 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 commit this sin of betrayal and just just wanted to make them know that when somebody betrays then the outcome will be that they will be humiliated at the end and they will be disgraced so th- for this very reason yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam he he delayed his release and he did not accept the message of release rather he said to the ambassador go back to the king and ask him to make the investigation and then eventually the king did make the investigation and after making the full investigation the the result was that yusuf alayhi salatu salam is innocent he did not commit any sin it was the wife of the aziz misr the governor of the misr egypt is at wrong she was the one who seduced yusuf alayhi salatu salam not yusuf alayhi salatu salam seduced his wife so inshallah my listeners up to this point we have learned some lessons you know up to these verses the lessons we have learned number 1 is what we've learned from these verses that the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that for his favored 
servants, he always makes unseen arrangements for them to be cleared off from all the blames which were put on them, such as Yusuf salam, when the blame was when the blame was put on him and then he was put into the jail and Yusuf alayhi salatu salam without uh, he was accused falsely and he was put into the jail Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made such arrangements that the no Yusuf alayhi salatu salam he had no one's favor on him and he was not indebted to anyone's favor. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself made the unseen arrangements for Yusuf alayhi salatu salam's release by making the king see a horrible dream and then making the person who was released from the jail to remember the request of Yusuf, which Yusuf alayhi salatu salam made to him that, you know, when you go back to the King, you remember, ask the king that you know there is a innocent prison prisoner in the prison. He is there, but rather Allah made him forget this request. And then, when the king saw the dream, he he gathered all those who give the interpretation of the dreams. And this man was also there. Then he remembered, oh, oh Yusuf Ali Salatusam, there is someone in the jail who could give the interpretation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him remember. So here we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an unseen arrangements for his favored servants in order to take them out of the difficulties. Number two, what we learn from these verses is that the when a person thinks he could be blamed in a in a place or on an occasion then he should he should avoid such places and such occasions there's a hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said he said avoid the places and the occasions of blame you know a person when a person is somewhere where he should not be and then he should you know he should avoid such place you know a place where can, one can be one can be blamed by others then he shouldn't go there. A hadith of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in one occasion, our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at night, it was it was dark and he was along with one of his uh, his wife, blessed wife, Azwaji, one of the Azwaji Mutahharat in the in the in the streets of Medina and Munawwara. And it was night. There was no lights, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was walking along with her, and what uh, another companion was also walking at a distance. And when he saw Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallam saw him because it was it was dark and he so his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know called him out and he said, Look, this woman who is with me, she is my wife. The companion said, SubhanAllah, O Prophet of Allah, can we have any ill thoughts about you? You are Prophet of Allah. Prophet Sallallahu said, I know that you will not have an ill thought about me. But Shaitan, he runs in person's veins like a blood, like a blood. So therefore, I thought, you know, just to, you know, just to make it clear to you that this woman, before the Shaitan puts this in your mind about me, an, an evil thought in your mind, I thought I just clear off this evil thought. You know, before it comes in your mind, I just clear up before it occurs in your mind that this woman who is walking with me, she is my wife. So what we learn from here that, you know, we should always, you know, make sure that, you know, we shouldn't do something because of which people, you know, are put into suspicion and people start suspecting us. Or we shouldn't be in a place where people should start, you know, suspecting us and having, you know, bad, you know, thoughts about us or, you know, evil doubts about us. We should avoid such places or we should avoid, you know, such occasions. And <clears throat> these are the things you know we've learned from these uh, from these verses of the of the Quran, and also what we've learned here about Ambi Ali Muslatu Salam. The Ambi Ali Muslatu Salam, you know, they always had this concern for people of their akhirah. You know how they can you know how they can become successful, and how can they you know avoid. The the, punish, the the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the azab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only that they had, they had the concern of akhirah for people, they also had the concern of dunya for them. 
you know this when the when the when the king saw that dream and yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was mentioned this dream and he did not consider you know just to you know sufficient to just to mention the the meaning of the dream rather he also gave a you know a well you know a well meaningful advice you know he said to them look you know when you grow the crops and when you store the the wheat crops you know leave the wheat crops in the ears so that they do not go bad you know this is the advice he gave because you know the if you take them if you, if you, if you, if you take them out of the ears what will happen you know the the bacteria will eat them and they will they will go bad so he gave the advice keep it in the in the ears only taking out only what is needed so here yusuf ali salatu from the nabi of allah you know he you know he gives the interpretation and also you know he had this concern the, the world the concern for the for, for the people that he gave them this advice that do this by doing this you know you will you know you will you will save and you know you will protect the the, the wheat crops from being uh, from becoming from being eaten by the bacteria so this is what we learn from the from the chronic verses and from the chronic stories that the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he mentions the stories you know in the stories of the of the prophets there are so many guidances for the listeners you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of yusuf and in the story of yusuf there are so many uh, guidance one can learn and so many lessons one can take so these are the lessons you know we uh, of today's uh, dars which we have learned from this story may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me a new the tawfiq to act up on what we hear and say just one thing i just wanted to make uh, make it clear uh, in my uh, friday's talk i mentioned regarding the 15th uh, night of shaban and mistakenly i said it will fall on monday uh, which was it which is which is wrong uh, actually the the 15th night of shaban it's not on monday rather it will be on tuesday night a night between tuesday and wednesday so i hope <coughs> the the message is clear to you regarding the night the 15th night of shaban i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end to forgive us all and I ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get rid of this coronavirus and I ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who have become a victim of the coronavirus and they are ill or then they are in the hospitals or they are you know they having the symptoms of the coronavirus by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a quick recovery and those muslims who have passed away in this coronavirus may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a high rank in paradise and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give sabr to their loved ones i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq to obey him and obey prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq to obey and to follow the footsteps of our predecessors the our aslaf our the pious and the righteous people may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to remain steadfast on our deen and our amal till our death when the time of death comes i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us from this dunya with iman wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin